All right, let's talk about Xfinity Series at Las Vegas quickly. I th thank you guys for sticking around. I truly thought you guys would just leave <laughs> on, on the 1st of March for everybody who's stuck around for the amount of messages and everything that you guys have sent me in terms of, hey, Brandon, I can possibly help with this. Do you need any help here? Uh, I've gotten so many of those messages. It's been incredible. Thank you, each and every one of you, for reaching out to me uh, and just talking to me through all this stuff. Um, but yeah, everybody who's who's sticking around, thank you very much. Uh, I do have a new tier on Patreon. It's 25 bucks. Uh, yes, it gets my projections and everything for each and every race every month, but it's more to support me and support the channel and everything. I think that's a, a very fair price point uh, in addition to all the free shows and live shows and stuff that we do. So if you want to just support me and get my projections and stuff and, you know, feel free to join the new $25 tier on Patreon. Let's very quickly talk about the Xfinity series. So let's analyze this by looking back at last year's Las Vegas fall race and then looking at how people performed in the Auto Club event. And I think we can have a pretty good idea of where we want to go. And, and the pricing is kind of reflecting that on DraftKings right now. Let's talk about last year. So AJ Allmendinger gets the pole. Stupid, fast, trimmed out car. Uh, but AJ, as per usual with colleague, they had tremendous issues in the draft. They were far too tight. AJ had at least seven meltdowns in this race. And we never really saw anything out of the other Collie cars. When we look at how Austin Dillon ran at Auto Club, I think that's a situation where I, I, I personally believe Austin Dillon underperformed and Colleague underperformed with what they probably should have ran. I understand that we saw Austin Dillon inside the top 10 for, for a majority of the race, but look, I wanted to see more speed from that. Kyle Busch being 13-5 this week, it's not insane. It's not, you know, 14, 15, but I got I want to see practice stuff. Okay. I need to see lap times. I want to see this from Kyle Busch. I want to see him specifically in the, in the draft at any point and possibly if we can get that in practice, because that is, everybody knows that's colleagues biggest, just hindrance is being way too trimmed out in the draft, way too trimmed out in the pack. It, it was absolutely horrendous. Leaning back towards last year, the 54 car of Ty Gibbs, which I, I would kind of just slot in Nemechek in this situation here. Gibbs had fantastic long run speed. Uh, later at, in the second half of the race, we saw Junior Motorsports uh, pretty much as a whole unit get better, start running nearly everybody in the top five, and it was just basically Ty Gibbs versus JGR or uh, Junior Motorsports. When we look at Nemechek, fantastic speed at Auto Club, clearly. Okay, was able to race head to head and beat Cole Custer in this race. Able to, you know, run head to head and beat Austin Hill in the race. Okay, we had um, several of the Junior Motorsport cars were into issues. I mean, they, clearly they had to start in the back. We had, you know, Josh Berry running an issue and had basically had to drive through the field like three times. We have Creed basically driving through the field three times. But Nemechek is probably my most interested driver in terms of where he ends up starting. If Nemechek ends up showing us speed and practice and qualifying in the top three, there's a real chance that I believe he can repeat what he did at Auto Club. If he ends up starting fifth or fourth, I believe that it's going to be more of a junior motorsports type of lean towards this weekend. And the reason being is, as I said, this last time, Ty Gibbs would have tremendous long run speed, but the guy who had the best speed at Las Vegas in the fall was Noah Gregson. Okay, Junior motorsports was absolutely on fire at the intermediates in the second half of the season, okay? And the fact that Nemechek is going to be the deciding factor if it's Junior Motorsports or if it's Nemechek, uh, I want to. I just want to see how he comes in. I want to see what he's bringing in the practice uh, speeds. Cole Custer, I'm going to rely on practice speeds. It's just that, like, man, Nemechek was so, so fast. I mean, the 26 fastest laps last week is, in my opinion, pretty impressive with how fast I think the junior motorsport cars were leading 49 laps like that. I think that's not, I think that's good, man. That's good to see. Um, Austin Hill. Let's talk about Austin Hill, Sheldon Creed. I kind of want to be aggressive on these guys, specifically Creed. I know Creed was, a, was a, was a wild, wild ride. Okay. Starts in the back. I was overweight on him and I don't know how he doesn't kill himself down that back straightaway. And then we have a Greg Moore 2.0, 
the fact that he was able to loop it around and just honestly barely tack, tap the uh, the rear end against the inside wall. And he missed the, uh, not the bumped out portion of the wall, but, you know, the back straightaway, uh, you know, goes straight and then there's an exit point for all the emergency vehicles. He was maybe like 30 yards in front of that, like, indention or, like, wall coming out down the back straight. Very easily could destroy that car. Like, Creed had no business finishing that race. Um but the fact that we get Sheldon Creed at 8,500 again, okay, uh, 15 laps led. Look, I'm I'm I am more than happy to go back to Creed. Sammy Smith uh, surprised me in terms of speed. Yes, he ends up finishing 19th. Ends up having a, a pretty poorish finish from the upside that we saw. But like, dude, when you look at like what Gro- Joe Graff Jr. was doing, Joe Graff Jr. didn't do anything in that car or in, in a similar car. Nemechek had the fastest machine. The fact that we get Sammy Smith here at $8,700, I'm I'm very much interested in in him. Tyler Reddick probably runs better if we don't have, if we if he doesn't get damaged in the, in the race, early in the race too. That was like on lap eight or nine when he was put in the fence, and then they spent the entire time just trying to repair that car. Uh, as I said, you know, entering last weekend, uh, Kaz Gralla was going to be interesting if he could show a speed. Clearly, Sam Hunt has speed. I mean, I think Kaz Gralla and Reddick are bringing way more stability to Sam Hunt than the guys that they were running last year. I wouldn't be shocked if we continue to see that type of speed from these guys. So, Gralla at 76. The fact that we do have Joe Graff Jr. at 77, if he can perform or if he can qualify shitty, in my opinion, like shitty in the sense of like, Look, Joe Graff, start sixteenth, fifteenth. We might, we might have a play here. I mean, look, I'm, I'm really leaning the, in the just practice uh, speeds for a lot of these guys, just because they're new teams. Uh, we, as I said, we lost the, the big, we lost the fastest guys in this, in this series with uh, Gregson and, and Ty Gibbs moving on in the Cup series. So I want to see where all the dominoes are going to lie. Um, I think RCR can be fast, but are they going to be right with Junior Motorsports? Probably not. You know, I want to play Cole Custer, but I I just need to see some speed from him first uh, before I before I really just get off of trying to pound in Justin Allgaier, or Josh Berry, Sam Mayer. I I want to play all the junior motorsport cars. Maybe not Brandon Jones. You know, Brandon Jones is very much what we envisioned him being. Sure, he, he ends up finishing you know thirty third with an issue, but look, did we see anything that was? Anything else than what we saw at Brandon Jones with, with Joe Gibbs racing? I don't think so. Okay. Um, when we look back, let me look real quick. Did, let me look. I got to pause this right fast. Mm-hmm. All right, sorry about that. I got a message. Let's talk about the value plays really fast. We don't have David Starr in the player pool at the moment. I'm sure we'll end up getting him added uh, just due to the fact that the race is on. Saturday, but we will uh, be updated there because he is in the Our Motorsports machine. The fact that, in my opinion, we have some pretty big egregious mispricings here is the reason why I'm kind of skipping the mid-range. We'll talk about that more, you know, in the live shows, more just in the projections in general following the practice. But when we look at when we look at last weekend's race, I was absolutely shocked that Rotor Grinders was really punching and, and moving up Joey Gaze as much. Uh, I was absolutely shocked to see him right at 25%. Uh, that was pretty crazy. When we look at Timmy Hill, fantastic speed. Unbelievably fast. Couldn't believe it. Ends up having a track bar issue in the second half of the race. Goes lap down. Couldn't make anything of that. Unfortunate for for sure. Am I going to go back to the well with Mason? Hell yeah, I am. I think $4,500 is way too cheap for the 66 car that they're putting money in. They're clearly bringing sponsors in. Last week, just mechanical issue there. The fact that we have, and I want to add, the fact that we have Josh Balicki for for DGM at forty nine hundred dollars is a bit of a misprice. I yet again another situation where these guys are putting a lot of money into this machine. Balicki lo- missed out on the Daytona race to open the season up. That ninety one needs owner points. Uh, Josh Balicki at forty nine hundred dollars. Mason at forty five. I doubt Ryan Vargas is going to make the race. Uh, if you guys remember. Uh, Jayski, or I forgot if it was Vargas Jayski, whoever did it, um, when they announced that he was leaving JD Motorsports, they were like, yeah, he's moving on to bigger and better things, and he hasn't made a single race yet. Uh, so yet again, we need to get a wellness check on, on Smithley if, God forbid, he misses a third race in a row to start the season off. CJ Bailey Curry, um, 
just going to depend on starting positions, depend on where they are, uh, just what speed they're showing here. Uh, just for me personally, I'm 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 probably most likely going to play Balicki in pretty much nearly any situation. Uh, I mean, unless he starts like 23rd and higher, I I, I see it very hard for me to not envision playing Balicki uh, in my line. And then yet again, just trying to jam in as many of the 10K guys. The fact that we have Kyle Busch, the fact that we have, you know, so many cheap guys in this race, it it it's, in my opinion, easy to get to a Junior Motorsports, uh, at least two of those drivers, you know, Austin Hill. I mean, not Austin Hill and Junior Motorsports, but like adding Austin Hill into that, adding Sammy Smith into that, adding Sheldon Creed into this. Like if you just play just kind of early, you know, looking at lineups, if you play Balicki, it's nine thousand dollars left on average. We really don't need to goof around, unless there's just like a clear and obvious place differential play and stuff. But in my opinion, we we don't really need to goof around with the six and and seven k range uh, right now. When you can just kind of start focusing on Creed, you can just start focusing on you know a lot of the eight k guys. Sure, you know in the seven k range, guys that are staying out to me, um, probably. You know, Kaz Grala, again, if they could repeat that speed. Joe Graff Jr., $7,700. Like, you could very easily get good cars. Now, yeah, sure, the drivers might be the issue. But, you know, just starting to line up with, like, Balicki, Creed, and Graff, you know, easy to get to. I mean, I don't hate any of those guys based on what their cars can do, you know. Uh, looking back at other people here, you know, Greg Holding blew a tire, destroyed that car, uh... On lap like 34 or something at Auto Club or uh, for RSS, you know, Blaine Perkins at $5,200. Josh Williams is back in the 92, right? Yeah, Josh Williams is back in the 92. The fact that he's $5,400, like, there's a lot of good plays in this race, and it we don't, in my opinion, I don't feel like I need to, you know, overextend myself and, and play like bad plays, you know, possibly like. Earnhardt, Ryan Ellis, you know, Alex LeBay. Uh, is Weatherman back at 34? What is it? Who is Weatherman with this weekend? Let me see. Where is Weatherman at? Is this, even when I looked, when the pricing came out yesterday, I was like, some of these, we're missing drivers. Uh, we are, let me look. Hold on, give me a second. Yeah, okay, I'm not going crazy. So uh, the, <laughs> the entry list <clears throat> I'm looking at from the 27th does not have um, Weatherman on here, so I need to find a, a more updated uh, entry list at some point. We'll figure that out tomorrow. Well, I mean, the race is on Saturday. You know, you know, basically just I'll go off the qualifying grid and stuff. Anyway, but, like, I don't want to play Jeb Burton. You know, Roger Carruth is making, you know, he's, he's, he's a young guy. You know, very inexperienced in these faster cars. Uh, I don't really want to mess with Roger Carruth. We saw Jeremy Clements just deal with issues early last week at Auto Club before the race started on Saturday. Um, was still slow at times, you know, just didn't have the speed and certainly not paying off his price if he ends up qualifying probably 15th. So probably end up sliding to at least 20th, especially with how stacked this field is. Uh, Brett Moffat, $74. A guy that I'm very impressed by. I, you know, I didn't think it could work out. I didn't, I didn't think that he could finish ninth. I really thought he was probably going to finish around fifteenth, sixteenth. And I said before in the preview video for the season, and I said before the video at Auto Club that Brett Moffat, I think this car is going to have some speed. I think Auto Club will be a, a great uh insight on what this car can do and the fact that he had speed the entire race ran top 15 the entire race came back ninth the fact that we get him at 74 dollars aim racing look they've attempted to make quite a lot of races uh like this is more so uh because it's you know it's the austin wayne self group uh and was it chris wright i don't remember who they had trying to qualify this car last year but we would have, you know, a secondary car show up, and Chris Wright just couldn't, he just couldn't qualify. Let me make sure, because I'm pretty sure that was Chris Wright. Yeah, it was a combination of Chris Wright, uh, Austin Wayne Self last year. These guys were, were attempting the race in, or attempting races in the 32 car 
last year. Because I was like, I know they did not run the 25 in Xfinity last year. Uh, but yeah, it was the... It was the 32... 32 it was the... Look. It was, uh, it was this one here. Yeah. So, look, the fact that AM is, in my opinion, putting quite a lot of good money into this machine, the fact that Auto Club, as I've always said, Auto Club, Pocono, Michigan, yes, you know, a lot of things, a lot more things go into just raw speed, but the fact that that the fact that Auto Club is a great determining factor of where you are in terms of speed, the fact that Brett Moffat was fast all day and was fast at Daytona. Like, when you look back at it and how well Moffat ran at Daytona as well, I mean, this car is going to have some speed. I know he finishes 29th at, at Daytona, but the fact that Moffat was up front in the draft all day, the fact that he was fast by himself all day at Auto Club, the fact that he is only $7,400, the fact that we have Kaz Grala at 76 the fact that we have Joe Graff Jr. at 77 I don't think I'm going to be in the 6K range at all this week. Okay, I'm probably going to be in the low fives and fours, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like, six is, I just don't see a reason to get there. And even an 8K range, like Jones, probably not going to get there. And he's 9,000. Hemrick, not going to do it. Sammy Smith, possibly depending on where he starts. Klergeman, probably not, unless he can offer me a gigantic amount of place differential points. But, you know, Klergeman will probably qualify 13th or so. Probably an upside of 10th. I don't know if he can pay that off. Uh, you know, he's going to probably need, what is that, probably like 46, 47 points around there for a 5X. Uh, that's going to be a bit rough for Klergeman. Riley Herbst, $8,100. I actually really like that. Sorry, I'm kind of going through stuff and, and looking around. Um, let's see. Early early pool guys that I want to look at. Clearly, you know, all the tanky guys and stuff. Uh, Austin Hill, Sammy Smith. Mm. Let's see. Kaz Grala, Moffitt. Um, Riley Herbst. You know, Mason. Uh, Josh Balicki. Kind of where, you know, my early guys are. You know, Sheldon Creed as well, Joe Graff Jr. as well. Like, you know, I I, I got a good idea of where I want to go, at least right now. If things change in practice and stuff, I'll certainly let you know. But those are that's kind of how I want to approach Las Vegas here. So thank you guys yet again for supporting me, staying here, watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.